my top five favorite college quarterbacks right now. Let's get into it. Might be a little cliche, but Caleb Williams is number one. The guy is absolutely sensational. He is phenomenal. Clearly the number one overall pick. His guy can make any throw, super agile, massive arm, any off-platform, off-balance, off-script play or throw he has to make is damn near unmatched for what we've seen at the college level thus far. His improvisation is ridiculous. It's almost like he can move like Kyler, finesse like Mahomes in the pocket, a little bit of Lamar Jackson. I mean, it's nuts. Big dude, great runner. I mean, we look at his stature here. 6'1", 215 pounds, so he's really that prime quarterback size that you want to see. My only thing with him is I do feel like he moves around a little too much in the pocket, like kind of sometimes working himself into pressure or doing the really badly, you know, scrambling around in the backfield, going way 15, 16 yards back, backpedaling. And we've seen that out of Mahomes, too. We've seen that out of the run-and-gun era and aspect of the NFL because realistically, that's just what the league is getting to. And we know coaches don't necessarily like that, but some of that does come with being very off script and and more than anything, just playing in a, um, not in a system that wants you to go off script, but a system that allows you to be off script. And when you have the talent to do such, that's just going to be kind of a part of your arsenal. But he does know when to break the pocket. He does know when to hang in. The accuracy is on point. I mean, he's very, very dangerous with the legs as well. He can move very well in open space. The way his body just contorts in general when he actually goes to make a throw. um, I mean, you even look at his highlights. They slow it down for you so you can realistically tell how he's contorting himself when he's making his throws. And we've heard the comps to Mahomes. It's so fair. I'm not even wanting to be the one to jump on the hype train and just say Caleb Williams is the number one because he looks like Mahomes. When you go and watch him, there's a reason people say that. Very Mahomes-esque, very poised, plays very big, very calm in the pocket. We saw the Heisman season. He could damn well win it again. Now, he does have a lot of competition this year with a guy named Shador Sanders, Travis Hunter. Bo Nix could possibly be in that conversation. We don't know. But Caleb Williams is undoubtedly the unanimous number one overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. And realistically, it's going to be so fun to watch him play. I feel like he's going to be pretty solid off the rip. Don't know. Like, of course, he'll have an adjustment period to the NFL, but if, damn, it doesn't feel like he's already playing in the league with what he's showing us in college. Number two for me, Shadur Sanders. Do you believe we coming, we here, is personal, and Coach Prime is my daddy. (laughs) Shadur Sanders, and absolutely... Phenomenal quarterback through two games, the most yards in the Pac-12 through the first two games in, or not not the most yards, but uh, some of the most yards, I believe, or he might have had the most. I feel like it might have been fourth. I don't specifically remember that stat, but we know he's already setting records. He set the school record at Colorado. And really with Shadur Sanders, man, I I feel like I'm looking at Jalen Hurts. The arm pocket, or excuse me, the arm talent, the pocket awareness, the leadership, the ability to read the field, the finesse, the overall just understanding of the game, like he's kind of built like him too. Shador, I feel like Shador is already playing at an elite level, but we've got to let him adjust to this big stage. Clearly, before we start to anoint him, like we did in the past with the Trevor Lawrence, like we did so early with Justin Herbert, like some people did already in college with Joe Burrow, Because I don't believe Shador is to that level yet. Like, clearly he's not a Caleb. Um, I do think you can argue he is the second most talented quarterback in this draft class. Maybe I'm buying a little too much into the hype. Maybe I'm a prisoner of the moment. But I've looked at a Bo Nix's tape. You get, okay. I probably would take Bo Nix's talent over Shador slightly because he's played at Auburn, because he's played at Oregon. So he's just naturally got more CFB exposure. But Shador is undeniable. I mean, the first game, he's a legit NFL prospect. You've got NFL GMs. You have people that have been in this business for a while, understanding the talent as soon as it comes off the rip. And you love to see him get pressured, take the eight sacks. Nebraska's defense have 11 tackles for loss, stifling that offense. And Shador Sanders with Dion and Travis Hunter and Dylan Edwards and Xavier Weaver 
went out there and did their damn thing. Shador Sanders, my second favorite college quarter, second favorite college quarterback right now. Number three is going to be Bo Nix. Bo Nix is looking fantastic at Oregon right now. And I'll be honest with you. And by the way, when I do comps, I, I don't try to immediately compare them to a legend. But when I think of the standard of a quarterback, I'm going to put them in the perspective of a superstar's performance so we can kind of understand on a general level what they bring to the table. With Bo Nix, I, I kind of see Russell Wilson. I really do. Finesse in the pocket, moves very well outside of the pocket. We've seen the amount of scrambles that he can actually have the impact on in the game. Dude was a gamer, an absolute baller at Auburn. In his freshman year, I remember it, the game against Georgia 2019. Dude is scrambling, scrambling on a fourth down, if I'm not mistaken, and he actually got it. Makes the transition over to Oregon and takes the leap. I mean, really takes the leap. Great numbers last year. You look at Bo Nix, 6'2", 217 pounds. 3,593 yards, 29 touchdowns, seven interceptions last year. As soon as he leaves Auburn, he ups his passing by 1,200 yards. This year, he's on pace for just shy of 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, no interceptions. The no interceptions is probably not going to happen, right? But he's got five touchdowns, no picks thus far. Bo Nix really, I feel like, has control of the game already. Playing in Auburn, having that experience, I mean, it means a lot in college to have that natural experience in front of you playing in the SEC. We know the SEC is the toughest conference in college football. The SEC breeds NFL players on the regular. It is a purebred house for NFL players when we talk about the SEC. And Bo Nix got to witness that. You go look at Bo Nix's splits here, 2019, 20, and 21. He was at Auburn. And he threw about 1,000 passes there, a little more. 58% completion, 59% completion. 71, 61% completion first year in Oregon, 72% completion this year. He is at a 78% completion rate, 73 touchdowns, 23 interceptions in his career, 313 yards. I mean, he's got 1,425 yards in his career in college for rushing, 32 touchdowns last year, 510 yards, 14 touchdowns with Oregon. Bo Nix is a baller, dude. I firmly believe that Bo Nix is first round quarterback talent. Without question. Of course, there's flaws in these guys' games, but the, the the five guys that I have on here really play some damn good football. I'm not going to say near perfect. They're clearly still in college for a reason. They're clearly going to get recruited and looked at scouts, looked by looked at by scouts for a reason. But Bo Nix comps to Russell Wilson for me all day. Big arm, nice control of the offense, reads the field well, can move, is very agile. Great touch on the ball. I mean, I mean, you can argue he might be the second best throw of the football in this college draft as well. Just snaps off his wrist. Love the accuracy that he was showing us in Oregon last year. Love the rushing ability he was showing us. And clearly that's why he transferred. He saw something that he could take advantage of and he went for it. And I love what it's doing for Bo Nix. That's why he's my number three college football quarterback right now. Number four, the left-handed Big Ben. Michael Penix Jr. Yeah, I said it. Michael Penix Jr. is the left-handed Ben Roethlisberger. Built like him, kind of sluggish in the pocket like him, but damn, if he can't step up and roll out a little bit if he needs to and dot that thing, man. And he's a lefty. I've always got love for left-handed quarterbacks. Love Tua for that reason, plus just two is a baller. Love Michael Penix for this reason, and clearly he's a baller as well. College football's passing leader. Last year with just under 4,700 yards, if I'm not mistaken. And Michael Penix stands at a huge 6'3", 213 pounds. We look at his stats as he came into this year. Last year with Washington, if they'll pull up here for me, 4,641 yards, 31 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. So a 41 touchdown to interception ratio. Not the biggest runner of the football, which is why I say he feels like a Big Ben comp here. Very big body huge, hangs in the pocket well. Like I said, little sluggish, not the quickest out of the gate. Massive arm, though, massive build, and, and he can make plays. He can throw the deep ball. He can throw strikes over the middle. He can make throws to any point strongly on the football field. And when you look at just a large quarterback coming in that you realistically would like to get some use out of, like it, 
kind of felt like Anthony Richardson in a way without the legs. Huge build, big arm, huge will to learn. And Michael Penix is balling out at Washington. We see what he did last year again, being just under 4,700 yards as, as the leading passer in the nation with Washington's college football team. And I'm excited to see what he turns out to be as well. There's some other quarterbacks out there, like, you know, maybe a Riley Leonard that you would have looked at. I, I, w- I wasn't super impressed. I like what Riley Leonard shows, but I'm not as impressed as Michael Penix. And I think Michael Penix has used his, used his size to a big advantage. He's going to be your guy again, hangs in the pocket, sees the field well, is going to be able to shrug off some hicks with that 6'3, 215 pound frame. I mean, he's, he literally feels like a left handed. Big Ben Roethlisberger. And my fifth favorite college quarterback right now, maybe I can move him up because he's talented as hell. I'm going to take Jordan Travis, who probably should be higher on this list, out of FSU. Jordan Travis standing at six foot one, 212 pounds. So, you know, not the biggest build either, but Jordan Travis is a hell of an athlete. This guy really reminds me of Justin Fields outside of the pocket and as a runner, but Bryce Young in the pocket. Really, he does. Bryce Young has the finesse. We just saw him being the first overall pick in the draft to hang in the pocket, to really be calm, to understand the defenses that are coming his way, to have the command of the offense, and really just be a a damn sniper from the pocket. And and that's what Jordan Travis is really capable of. You go and look at his stats for last year. 3,214 yards, 24 touchdowns, five picks this year, six touchdowns, one interception. We see him in the major game against LSU and and Justin or excuse me and Jordan Travis who again reminds me of Justin Fields outside of the pocket he's agile as hell he will make guys miss he will go on cuts he will make defenders in college and in the NFL when he goes look very silly he's got that capability as an athlete and and I love to see that because it's I feel like he's floating really kind of like at that perfect size like Justin Fields is like he's got a build to him so he can hang in the pocket he can see over his line he's He's large enough for a quarterback, kind of like C.J. Stroud as well, but then also is just slim enough to be able to move outside of the pocket and really be effective with it. That's why Cam Newton was so special. That's why Josh Allen is so special. That is why, um, ah, Lord, Anthony Richardson can possibly be so special. When you have size like that and then you're also able to move behind it, now, of course, he's not as big as those guys. Obviously, you get bigger and are still able to move at that you know level. Like That's, that's legendary. It's it's scary. Cam Newton still leads all quarterbacks in the NFL history with the most rushing touchdowns by a quarterback, which is why some possibly regard him as the greatest dual threat of all time. Still Michael Vick for me, but that's a conversation for another day. Love what Jordan Travis brings to the table here. You can argue that all five of these quarterbacks right here are first round picks. Notice how I didn't have Drake May on there. I'm, just, I'm not a Drake May guy right now. I'm not buying into him right now. I like what these five guys are showing me talent wise. And really the trajectory of how they've gotten better over their career. Not saying that Drake May hasn't, but Drake May isn't as dynamic as these guys to me. Number one, Caleb Williams. Number two, Shadur Sanders. Number three, Bo Nix. Number four, Michael Penix Jr. Number five, Jordan Travis on my five favorite college quarterbacks right now. 